Hey, how's it going? Keith Townsend from the CTO Advisor. Hopefully I'm in frame. I'll pull back a little bit more just to make sure this is the first time I'm trying to use this with the front facing camera. We're going to talk about VMware vSphere 7 and Kubernetes and my reaction to the Tech Field Day presentation from thir this past Thursday. Uh, you know what? Four hour marathon. Uh, where they covered way too much material in a four in just a four hour period. I think they touched five or six different products within that time. So we couldn't go into depth in some of the areas that I wanted to go to personally. I love just feedback to the VMware team. Next time you guys do a tech field day presentation, it amount a massive number of, of announcements. I personally prefer to uh, spend a lot of time deep diving into uh, the bigger portions of it that really impact the entire ecosystem, specifically this vSphere 7 release with uh, support for Kubernetes. So we're gonna talk about that primarily today. You get specific questions at me on Twitter, at CTO Advisor, on Twitter, because I'm not watching the Periscope uh, feed. So first off, it wasn't what I expected. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's more of a gut reaction. When Pat and team announced Kubernetes on vSphere during uh, VMworld 2019, I expected Kubernetes on vSphere. What do I mean by that? So with the CRX and making and elevating Kubernetes to uh, equal tenant as a virtual machine, it's basically bare metal Kubernetes on vSphere. So what I expected was if you're a vSphere customer, it could be a, a licensing, I expected some level of licensing tie into that. So, you know, you might have to be a vSphere enterprise or whatever the equivalent version of the highest version of vSphere itself. In order to get that feature set, you need it to be a customer at that licensing level. Makes sense. If you're running Kubernetes on vSphere, you're probably doing it at scale. So it requires the highest licensing for vSphere. Uh, that's not what it is. What it is, is an extension of VMware Cloud Foundation. So what does that mean? VMware Cloud Foundation built on VMware vSphere, NSXT, uh, and I think some vRealize suite, basically the ability to run vSphere or SDDC, a reference design for SDDC, Software Defined Data Center, as VMware sees it, across any environment, Google, uh, Cloud Simple is based off of VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation, or VMware Cloud, uh, vCloud providers all leverage VCF to make sure you get a consistent experience across uh, all of the VMware vCloud partners, including cloud partners such as Microsoft Azure and uh, Google Cloud Simple. So, that means that I have to deploy VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation, in order to get Kubernetes. Is that a bad thing? Well, if I want VMware Cloud, well, if I want VMware Cloud Foundation, no, not at all, if I'm already bought into that concept. But if I'm bought into the higher end software defined data center concept that VMware has been selling us for the past 10 years, I don't need VCF. To have a VMware Cloud, to have a VMware Cloud Foundation type experience, I could go with NetApp storage, Dell EMC storage, uh, basic uh, V switches coming out of vSphere. I can build a very robust software-defined data center without the opinionated approach of VCF. So when you bring when you bought bolt Kubernetes on to that and forced me to use Kubernetes with VCF and primarily uh, the impact is that I have to use NSXT and if I'm a VMware Club customer talking containers, I'm going to use NSXT. I don't have a problem with that. The biggest thing I think is the, and I haven't gotten an answer from VMware is tying 
uh, the use of vSAN for the management platform for Kubernetes, for Tanzu Kubernetes. I'm not quite clear as to why that's needed. Uh, it's just keeping, as I understand it, state and sharing state across pods, across clusters, across the Tanzu grid on a shared storage underlay. My concept or understanding of VMFS, VMware's uh, file system, is that it is a distributed, distributed file system across all your vSphere holes. If I don't have vSAN, I still have VMFS. I don't see why VMware could have not just extended VMFS to give whatever capability that vSAN was giving. Why do I have a problem with that? Because you can obviously use, once you've depo deployed uh, vSAN for this small dependency, you can use whatever storage you want for your permanent and persistent storage layer for your pods and applications. This is just for Tanzu management. It creates complexity. If I need to deploy vSAN as a base capability to get the benefits of Tanzu, then VMware really needs to quantify why I'm adding another layer of complexity to my environment. How is that adding complexity? Well, I'm running vSAN. I'm running a enterprise storage platform. vSAN is not a toy, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a, a storage appliance like we saw in the early days of software-defined net uh, storage. It is a full enterprise class storage solution, and I'm deploying it for a single requirement of Kubernetes management configuration state. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit taken aback by that requirement. So that's kind of the, if there's a negative, there's a negative. I'm just not understanding why I need to deploy vSAN. I'm not sure why VMware didn't give what I interpreted as a promise of uh, allowing Kubernetes to run on vSphere without uh, me adding on the VCF licensing scheme. That just reeks of just licensing to me. Second uh, takeaway, namespaces. Wow, VMware really killed it with this idea. So they demonstrated this throughout all of their demonstrations with uh, Net Insight uh, Net their Net Network Insight project product. V realized in general, uh, vSAN uh, eventually to VMware storage, uh, vSAN storage, uh, and then even uh, obviously to Kubernetes, and then eventually to virtual machines. The ability to apply namespaces and namespace management to vSphere constructs. So instead of going uh, independently into the API to provision network storage or computer, whatever, I'm making API, API calls to namespaces. This is how application development works. If you hear a little bit of excitement in my voice, it is because it is a exciting uh, innovation. I haven't thought about applying the concept of namespaces to the software defined data center in general. So I'm really excited to see how uh, the folks in the industry are, uh, infrastructure's cold folks take these new constructs for virtual machines, networking and storage and the software defined data center and extend it. I'm even more excited about that than Kubernetes coming to vSphere in general. I'm not overly ecstatic about that. That's kind of like, okay, whatever. Uh, what any other vSphere 7 uh, enhancements that really struck to me? I think the only other thing is how am I going to consume this thing? Uh, the namespace thing is a huge learning curve, period. Implementing Tanzu. We haven't even gotten into uh, the non-opinionated uh, approach that VMware took towards Kubernetes. Uh, Ned Battlebanks over at Ned on the Clouds took the uh, position that VMware wasn't aggressive enough or opinionated enough on deploying Kubernetes. So deploying and managing Kubernetes itself 
isn't as simple. You still have to make all the design decisions you needed to make before with Kubernetes inside of Tanzu and Project Pacific, whatever uh, Tanzu, whatever Project Pacific is called now. I think it's Tanzu Grid, basically. Uh, so I'm not overly excited about Kubernetes on vSphere in general. I'm just mostly excited about, about namespaces. I'd love to hear what you're excited about. Let me know on Twitter, at CTO Advisor on Twitter. Follow me on the web, thectoadvisor.com. More importantly, register for the conference, the virtual conference happening April 21st. It is ctoavc.com, CTO Advisor virtual conference.com. Free to end users, still looking for sponsors. Talk to you next CTO, DOS, video, live stream, whatever we call it.